This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Well, joining us today is Mike Whitlow, the COO of ECR Minerals, following recent news about the planning for a diamond drill program at Tambo Victoria. Well, thank you very much, Mike, as always. How are you? Thank you very much, Mark. Yeah, I'm very well. Thank you. Yeah, good. Good Good to be catching up. So this is the, you're, you're planning um, to, uh, to start a drill program, sub-service gold evaluation and do the maiden diamond drilling Q4 2024, so not long away. And this is uh, off the back of the exploration work you've been doing, isn't it? You've done some soil sampling, you've found some, uh, yeah. some pretty high grade uh, soil samples there and also rock chips as well. But just give a bit of background to the work that's been done at Tambo that's led you to decide to plan a diamond drilling program. Yeah, of course. Um, so earlier in the year, we uh, we did we had the team up um, at Tambo. Uh, we did some rock chipping. We did some soil grids. Uh, we did some uh, lidar mapping. And you know, we applied for an analysis. That analysis came back encouraging. The follow up fire assay supported this um, the photon results that we announced to market. And subsequently, the uh, the soils have come back to show that we've got highly anomalous and anomalous gold in soils as well. So we were pretty much nailed on as to where we were going to drill and, and that we would drill at Tambo um, anyway. But this has given us a, a sort of secondary and even tertiary uh, supporting, you know, indicator for the drill in the ground at that, you know, at that place at uh, Tambo. Okay, and the analyst talks about this correlation between gold and bismuth that you've identified yeah. and, and then highlights that bismuth is a key pathfinder element. So this just explain a little bit more about this, what, what bismuth is and how it's helping you here. Pretty much in the statement is, is I've said really. I mean, there's a, there's a very clear correlation. What we're finding is um, where we're seeing uh, notoriously um, when using sort of antel dexaras type machines, gold is, is not, it can be unreliable in, in regard to its readings, uh, whereas bismuth has been, been flagging up continually. And when we've been getting those results, they sort of correlate with the infield uh, logging and, and, and data uh, base that we've been, you know, sort of uh, applying at that point in time. So, you know, the team will record on a day-to-day basis uh, a work program on what's been conducted and carried out, and then we, we cross-reference it. So, yeah, bismuth, bismuth has been um, present uh, actually business has been present with gold in, in some of our other assets as well but it's certainly telling us that what we're able to do on the ground is get is, is sort of again vectoring and um, mm. define areas of interest to us as a company okay okay and, and, and of course it's a diamond drilling program that you're planning why, why are you going for the diamond I know you get very nice core with that is that to help you look at the geology or is there a, the reason why you're going yeah. for diamond over uh, over RC um, yeah a number of reasons really Mark I think the data that we get from the diamond is, is a bit more acute um, if you want to deal with, with um, all the companies I've got to be really careful what I say but if you, if you the, the level of technical data that one requires to be able to um, forge relationships, or indeed, if we're looking um, to work with anybody on, on any of our assets, that, the diamond um, results are always favoured over RC um, or airsoft type of drilling results. But, you know, to be honest with you, what we've found is, is the RC, we've been able to utilise it fantastically well down in uh, Victoria, but on this occasion, a number of uh, reasons have led us to go down this route. And, you know, the, the part of the work that we've got planned is, is budgeted, you know, we're fully covered for all of this. And uh, yeah, we're, we're thrilled with the results that have been having. We're not necessarily thrilled with the responses from the market at times, but, you know, this is the nature of the uh, game that we're in, unfortunately. But yeah, I mean, some fantastic uh, results of late as well, yeah. Well, indeed, but you've got to drill, haven't you, as an exploration company? Um, I know that's what you've talked about before. You're really keen to get on with that and deliver success on the, the drill, but you're doing the negotiations now with landholders, 
contractors yeah. as well, that negotiation is going on. So you're looking to start Q4 roughly around that time, so only a month or two away. What would be the sort of ideal outcome? What would success look like off the back of this, uh, this programme? Yeah, I mean, if we can get from the core what we were getting from the uh, reconnaissance uh, work and the sampling that we did, uh, we'd be absolutely over the moon. I mean, the grade and the, the amount of gold that has been showing itself to us is, has been, you know, fantastic. So, you know, we would hope that in this in this case, in an ideal world, we'll get a we'll get a, you know a discovery a discovery that we will then lead us on um, and advance the business. I think you know I've complained about this. Uh, if that's the right phrase, um, in the investment community uh, is crying out for big discovery, for scientific data that can support advancing and accelerating this business. We're going as quickly as we possibly can. I know it's not always necessarily, you know, to everybody's liking, but we are um, delivering on what we say. The idea uh, early in the year when we recapitalize the business and raise funds is so we would have an opportunity to generate four, five, six key pieces of news and any or each one of those would be a significant catalyst to take us up that value chain. We're, you know, we're not happy as a board hovering around the current valuation. We think that um, that there's you know, a great potential here and we'd like to be in a position to deliver that to the investment community. And also mentioned in that recent RNS was, of course, an update on the Bayliston project where you've also been doing some work. You've uh, been exploring the antimony there and you want to now actually um, explore that a bit more due to the rising prices, you say, and interest in uh, in that commodity. So just give us a bit of an idea about the potential here for, for Bayliston and the antimony. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we, we, this is well documented, so I won't go sort of over it too, too in depth, but, um, you know, we... We were aware that there were a lot of inquiries for antimony from our peers in and around the uh, area where the assets located. Um, as the price rises, the interest levels are growing on a day-to-day -day basis. Inbound inquiries um, naturally uh, will will grow with it. Um, for us, we had some extraordinary results with the thirty-two percent. It was over a relatively small area, um, but. We submitted a portion of what we thought were our our um, best possible uh, uh, diamond drill core samples in order to uh, in order to see and measure what that antimony level was. So, um, extraordinary results, very 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 high grade, um, way beyond what would be needed. Uh, we expect that uh, as the price and interest continues to grow, the value to that asset is potentially going to grow with it. So. It would be remiss of us at this point not to be trying to get the most out of uh, all of our resets. Again, you know, we know that people sort of suggest, mm, you, you, are you spreading yourself too thinly? No, no, we're not really, because the work was already conducted and the opportunity um, has already been taken. Just that we, know, we, you know, we, we were not aware of it, simply down to the fact that we were only testing for gold at that point in time. So it's not too laborious, not really too taxing for us this month. It's about looking at what historically has been spent within this business and maximizing the return for investors. It's what we said when we joined the, the company, uh, when we recapitalized the business, we said we wanted to give investors an opportunity to be able to swing the bat more than once. And, you know, we're at that point now. We've got the diamond drill going in, we've got antimony, accumulate the tax losses, sale of property at Grimming Lane, a whole bunch of different things going on. We said it could be active. We are. Um, and we're hopefully delivering on what we've said. Um, naturally, we'd like to see a bit more of an improvement in the share price, but with all these things, uh, it's not an exact data and, and it will come when it comes. So, yeah, we're, we're pretty happy. Indeed, and, and it's good you mentioned that sort of having multiple swings at the bat there, and it certainly looks like that's what's going on. Um, of course, we can expect that Diamond Drill program to start fairly soon, and then you're going to look a bit more at exploring that antimony potential there at Bayliston. I mean, we are in the, the summer in the UK now. It's, it's pretty warm in you know in various places around the world. I know you're pretty warm at the moment, but I mean, <laughs> as we move out of the summer and go into the sort of the autumn and people come back to, to work, what sort of position would you want to see the, the company in when perhaps there's more of a more more of a focus, more eyes are back on uh, the markets and what companies are working on. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we've made this statement before that we're planning to build a company with a valuation that's in line with where the business was when it was in its former glory days at, uh, you know, 25, 30 million quid. And, and you know, we have to have um, ambition 
in order to be able to generate that sort of opportunity. And we think we're well on the way to, to do that. Um, okay. At that point, I would probably argue that the, you know we should look at strengthening the, the team that we have. Um, and, you know, we've got a growth plan for when that, you know, moment in time lands. So, yeah, I mean, as a business, we've got everything in the right position. Results have been really favourable. We, we did have a slight delay earlier in the year, which, you know, frustrated the market a little bit. But other than that, everything we said we would do, we've done. We've done it pretty well. The execution's been decent. Um, you know, the the assay gods have, have, have sort of shone upon our uh, bowels with results. We've been really happy with the results. And, you know, the guys, uh, we've got a couple of teams out in the field currently at Lulworth. And as I say, you know, they will, one team will stay up there. Uh, Adam and the uh, rest of the guys will come back down. We'll be out at Sambo and hopefully we can show investors where their veterans go with, get them the results that they want. We'll look for a nice discovery uh, in gold. That's a fantastic one. It would, it would indeed. But for now, thank you very much for your time. Mike Whitlow, the COO of ECR Minerals. Thanks, mate. You have a great day and speak soon. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programmes at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.